evaporation and humidity. Water is a vital ingredient of the environment and the biosphere. Plant and animal life on Earth requires fresh water and the only source of fresh water is the atmosphere through condensation of water vapor. Water is an unusual phenomenon because it can be found in three states of matter in everyday life. That is, a solid state like ice, in a liquid state such as water, and in a gaseous state such as water vapor. Water, in its different states, affects our planet and our lives in many ways. Let us understand water in the vapor state in the atmosphere and the process by which it transforms into the liquid or solid state and ultimately arrives at the surface of the ocean and land through the process of precipitation. The interchange of the different states of water between the ocean, land and air is called the hydrologic cycle. Evaporation, condensation and precipitation are the three physical processes involved in the hydrologic cycle. Evaporation is the process by which water is converted into water vapor by the sun's heat. The rate of evaporation is directly proportional to the temperature of air. Evaporation occurs at all temperatures. However, it is more rapid at higher temperatures as compared to lower temperatures. When the temperature of air increases, the capacity of air to hold water vapor also increases. However, there is a limit on how much water vapor the air can hold at any given temperature. A mass of air is like a sponge. Lowering the temperature of a mass of air is like squeezing a sponge. If you squeeze a soaking wet sponge, water will drip out of it since the capacity of the sponge to hold water decreases. But damp sponge requires a good squeeze to wring all the water from it. Similarly, when the temperature of air decreases, the capacity of the air to hold water vapor decreases. And when the temperature increases, the capacity of the air to hold water vapor increases. When the air is holding the maximum amount of water it can hold, the air is said to be saturated. The capacity of air to hold water is related to the temperature. When the temperature is high, more water will be needed to saturate the air. At low temperatures, a smaller quantity of water would be enough to saturate the air. The temperature at which the air gets saturated is known as the dew point. Clear skies and winds are also factors causing evaporation. Winds carry away moist air, which is replaced with dry air, thus increasing the rate of evaporation. Energy is required to convert water from the liquid state to the vapor state. Air absorbs this energy from its immediate surroundings. For example, on a hot day, it feels cool under the fan because the perspiration of the skin evaporates quickly due to the rapidly moving air. As the moisture evaporates, it absorbs heat from the skin surface, causing it to cool. When a person is suffering from high fever, a cold compress is applied to the forehead. As the water evaporates, it absorbs heat from the forehead and helps in lowering the temperature. The term humidity refers to the amount of water vapor present in the air. The amount of water vapor present in the air varies greatly from time to time and place to place. When the air contains large amounts of water vapor, the weather is said to be humid. The warmer the air, the more moisture it can hold. The total amount of water vapor present in a given volume of air is known as absolute humidity. The unit used to express absolute humidity is grams per cubic centimeter. If the absolute humidity is 10 gram per cubic centimeter, then in a sample of 1 cubic centimeter of air, 
The amount of water vapor present is 10 grams. Absolute humidity is not a very useful measure because it does not take temperature into consideration. Specific humidity denotes the actual amount of water vapor present in a given mass of air. For any specified air temperature, there is a maximum mass of water vapor that a kilogram of air can hold. Specific humidity therefore is defined as the mass of water vapor in grams contained in one kilogram of air. Specific humidity is often used to describe the moisture characteristics of a large mass of air. For example, extremely cold dry air over the Arctic region in winter may have a specific humidity as 0.2 gram per kilogram while extremely warm moist air of equatorial regions may have a specific humidity as high as 18 gram per kilogram. Relative humidity is another way of expressing the amount of water vapor in the air. It is a ratio between the actual amount of water vapor present in the air and the maximum amount of water the air can hold at that temperature. It is always expressed in percentage. For example, if the relative humidity is 25%, then it means that the humidity is not very high. It is only a quarter of its total capacity to hold water vapor at that temperature. Consider this graph. At 10 a.m., air temperature is 16 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity is 50%. By 3 p.m., the air is warmed to 32 degrees Celsius by the sun and the relative humidity automatically drops to 25%, which is very dry air. The air becomes chilled during the night and by 4 a.m., the temperature drops to 5 degrees Celsius. Now, the relative humidity is automatically risen to 100% and the air is saturated. Standard charts are available that give the maximum amount of water the air can hold at different temperatures. Humidity can be measured with the help of a hygrometer. Human hair expands in moist air and contracts when it is dry. So some hygrometers and hygrographs contain a set of hair under tension. Variation in the length of the hair is registered as relative humidity changes. Relative humidity can be measured by an instrument known as the wet and dry bulb thermometer. Two thermometers are mounted side by side. One thermometer is of the ordinary type and the other has a piece of wet cloth around the bulb. When evaporation occurs, it cools the cloth cover thermometer below the temperature shown on the ordinary thermometer. The difference between the dry and the wet bulb readings gives an indication of the humidity of air. The difference in temperature shown by the two thermometers increases as relative humidity decreases. When the air is fully saturated, there is no evaporation from the wet cloth and both the thermometers read the same. Standard tables are available to show the relative humidity for a given combination of wet and dry bulb thermometers. Humidity has a certain effect on our life. High relative humidity causes discomfort since perspiration does not dry up easily. Low relative humidity causes the skin to dry and become rough and cracked. When humidity increases, the pain in the joints also increases for people who are suffering from rheumatism. Due to low humidity, wood and glue dries out, causing the furniture to loosen and crack. Because of its humid climate, Mumbai is an important center for the cotton textile industry. Humid climate favors the manufacture of high-quality cotton cloth. In Ahmedabad, where the humidity is usually low, humidifiers are used to regulate the humidity in its cotton textile mills.